Maybe you've got a cool new model you'd like to show off, or maybe you just reached a thousand subscribers on YouTube and you made yourself a trophy because you think you're so cool. That's what happened to me. Let's take it for a spin. Hello and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a turntable animation to show off your 3D models or whatever else you want to show off in 3D. And um, it's pretty simple. So before we get started, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. YouTube sent me this cool little animated GIF. This is bananas saying how bananas it was that I reached a thousand subscribers. I don't think it's that bananas though, because you guys are the bomb. And, um, and thank you for subscribing. Uh, I am an honest guy though, so I didn't want to leave out the 83 of you who have joined since that milestone. Don't worry, you are accounted for. Sorry to those of you who subscribe later, I will not be updating this video. So anyways, I'm not going to talk about how I made this banana. It's pretty simple. I just um, kind of made a, a pentagon five-sided shape, which bananas have five sides. I googled it, extruded it, added some materials, did some simple stuff. What did I say? I wasn't going to explain how it happened. Anyways, now you know. So let's actually get started here. I, because I'm so vain, I have this banana trophy I made for myself and we want to rotate around so that you guys can see how freaking cool it is. So there are a couple things to note before we really dive into this. One, when you are doing a turntable animation, you want to, the easiest thing to do is to have all your objects in the, in the center of the scene so that you know, um, you know, when you're rotating things around that the center of the scene, the origin is, is kind of your reference point. Everything's going to move around that. So it's a good idea to have everything set up in some, somewhere where you know where it is. So the origin is a really good example of that. Likewise, I have my camera set up here, um, and it is at zero, you know, it's kind of, it's all evened out zero X, you know, I wouldn't want it kind of over here because then when I rotate it, it'd be like weird. So let's keep that right there in the center. So now the next thing you need to do is decide, do you want the camera to rotate around the object or do you want the object to rotate and the camera stay still? So I'm going to put up two little animations here on the left is the camera rotating and on the right is the object rotating and the camera staying still now the difference here kind of is you know if you rotate the camera then you you would have to your scene like if you had a seamless backdrop like i do here you'd have to model kind of like a circular seamless backdrop which really isn't a big deal but the main thing that I think is advantageous to having the object rotate is that your lighting stays the same so that when the object rotates, the lighting um, stays the same and kind of, you know, you kind of get those shadows moving across your object. So now let's really get started. What I'm going to do is since I want to rotate all these objects, I want to, I don't want to kind of rotate them all individually. I want to just have one thing that's in charge of it all. Um, and who's in charge of things more than parents? You're right. Parents are in charge of their children. So let's make some parents and children. This is getting kind of weird. Never mind. Okay, so shift C so that I know this new object I'm going to make is popping right into the center. Shift A at an empty. I'm going to use a cube. You can use whatever you want. I like the cube. And an empty is basically just a, a null object. It's an object that doesn't do anything. It's just there for purposes such as this. So to parent all these objects to this empty, to make them children of this empty, which will be the parent. I'll stop explaining that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to circle select by pressing C. I'm going to select all these objects, not this one. And then I'm going to, this is really important. The last one I click, so I'm going to press shift, right click, needs to be the empty. So that means that that's the active object. You can see all these other objects are kind of like a darker orange. And then this last one I selected, which is the empty, which will be the parent, is the active object. So now all I need to do is press control P and set the parent to that object. And now I don't have to, you can see, I don't have any of these other things selected, but when I press G on this empty, 
everything else moves with it. And that is perfect for what we're doing here. So now all I need to do is rotate this object. Um, I already have my camera set up. If you don't, now would be a good time to do that just so you can kind of see what's going on here. We can also go into render view, you know, shift Z, make sure things are looking cool. Yes, my golden banana trophy. Shift Z to go back out of that so it doesn't slow us down in the viewport. Um, so now you can see we just need to rotate and all we need to rotate around is the Z axis because you know nothing else is we're not we're not doing this. You could do that if you wanted. So what I want to do is add a keyframe here. And now I'm going to put this at frame zero and insert a single keyframe for the Z rotation. And now I'm going to put another keyframe at the end of my animation at frame 120 at 360, which is one full rotation. Now the reason I put this first keyframe at frame zero is because if I put it at frame one and then you know, I put a keyframe zero at that keyframe and then at frame 120 at the end of my animation, I put 360. That would mean that at those two frames, it's the same exact thing. So we would have a, like a slight little hiccup in our rotation. It wouldn't be totally smooth. So when you're doing this, it's a good idea. Anytime you're doing any type of a looping animation, it's a good idea to put the, um, you know, if you're matching frames on the start and the end of your animation, to put the first ones at zero instead of one. That way when Blender renders this out, starting at frame one, you can see down here, then um, you don't get that duplication. So now we have those keyframes, let's press play, and it is rotating. Now, one thing I don't like, you may not mind it, is that the object kind of slows down and speeds up, and I really want this to be just like a nice seamless rotation, like you'd see like a car at a car show or something like that. So the reason this kind of speed up and slow down is happening is because of something called easing. So I'm going to go into my graph editor over here. I'm going to press G to go into the graph editor. And by the way, if you ever need to make a new window, you can just click these three little squares or lines up in the top and drag down. And then you can change that to um, whatever you want. So I don't need that. So I'm going to click here and drag up and get rid of that. So that's kind of how, this is how I like my viewport set up. I'm going to do a separate video on that. But anyways, if you don't have a place to put the graph editor, that's how you do it. So I'm in my graph editor. This is easing. So you can see this is kind of controlling the, the speed of the rotation. Not going to go into too many details there. But what we want to do is make this a linear, um, a linear graph. So I'm just going to press A to select everything. Press T to set the keyframe interpolation to linear. And now you can see this goes at a constant rate. And now we have our rotating banana. Beautiful. And another little tip, if you press shift spacebar, you can maximize views. Really handy. Good thing to know. So that's about it, guys. Go into rendered view over here. Check it out. See how things are looking. And, um, you know, show us your, show us your models. Rotate them around. Let people see all sides of them. Anyways, thank you guys once again so much for being subscribers. It really means a lot. I am going to try to work my schedule to allow me to post more videos so that you guys can learn more cool stuff about Blender because I love Blender and I want you to love Blender too. So anyways, thanks again for subscribing. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you are not one of these 1,083 people, then subscribe, join the party. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.